Please rise as you are able. The Lord our God is great. The Lord, the Lord is worthy, worthy of our praise. praise. Come, let us remember the great things God has done for us. Let, let us not, not neglect to teach our children the greatness of God. Let us not forget our past and those who have gone before us. We remember our ancestors, our history, our Africa, and we name our future. Let us lift up our voices in song, lift our arms in praise, and open our hearts in gratitude. Let us greet God with our hymn of praise. Amen. Would you remain as you are for our opening hymn? may be seated. And good morning. Welcome to Founders Metropolitan Community Church. If this is your first time with us, let me say a special welcome. I'm Pastor Keith Mazingo. I'm the senior pastor here, and we're delighted to see you. And if it is your first time, maybe for one or two of you, would you just wave at me and let me wave back? Well, there we have it. If we have any new folks waving back, I can't see. The lights are a little bright. <laughs> I can't see you. Sorry about that. Um, but it's okay. Um, if we have some new folks, I'm sure the ushers will give you a little gift. And we just want to say welcome. We're delighted to see you. We also want to say welcome to those folks who are joining us online. If you haven't checked in here in the audience and let people know it's time for church, please do so. And welcome all of you that are joining us live and all of those who are joining us later in the week. We are always thrilled to see you here. And we are delighted, especially today, to have uh, Dr. Joyce Turner Keller with us in worship. Um, Dr. Keller came to us a couple of months ago. She's a dear friend of mine. She used to come over to MCC in Baton Rouge. She claimed it as her church. Now, everybody in town claims her at their churches, but she claimed our church for her church. 
So I, that really spoke, you know, volumes to me. It was, she, she always said that was the one place she could go, and nobody made any judgments about anything about her. Now that says something about who we are, amen? And so we are delighted to have her back in worship uh, with us today. In just a few minutes, she'll be bringing a monologue um, ab about uh, Juneteenth. You know that we are, are talking about Juneteenth a little bit today, and I hope that you are familiar with that. There is a blurb, I believe, in your bulletins about that. And she, I don't want to take away from anything she says, so I'm just going to leave all of that to her. Um, and so we just want to say we are delighted to have all of you who are so faithful to be here every single week. And we want to invite you to take just a moment to welcome one another. And because it is Father's Day, you're welcome to be seated. And because it is Father's Day, we are doing something that we did at Mother's Day uh, here pretty on quickly in the service. We want to, for those of you who have a father that you want to honor on Father's Day, whether it's your biological father or a spiritual father or someone you look to as a father figure, um, we want to welcome those spirits into our worship today and to honor them and we do that with just one of these flowers and we'll take them over and put them in the vase and as the day grows on between the three services you'll see like three or four vases up there full of flowers and it just keeps growing as those spirits are with us all during the day so i would welcome you now to just take a moment to bring your flower up to put in the vase Good morning. Please stand and remain standing. This morning the reading is taken from the Holy Ghost according to St. John chapter 8, verse 32 to verse is taken from the New King James Bible. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. One hear what the Spirit says today. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Amen. Amen. Thank you.
be seated. And without further ado, I bring to you Dr. Joyce Turner Keller. To give her a hand. Now, let me tell you something. You don't choose who I love. That's 
your truth. Amen. God said in the truth, shall make you free. Amen. So my question this morning is how free are you? Okay. Are you free enough to stand where there is conflict? Are you free enough to stand when you stand alone? All right. Are you free enough to stand for what you believe unmovable, unshakable? All right. How free are you this morning? Yeah, all right. How free are you this morning? How long are we going to be policed from the womb to the tomb? All right. How long are we going to have the shackles on our minds when Men tell us that we're less than. Women tell us that we're less than. But yet you can see you tell me you ate your daddy, your father for way long time ago. Then how come you thinking like he's thinking and acting like he's thinking acting? All right. If a man lives what has been ingrained in him or her, then that is who you are. Assimilation. We need to do some assimilating. Mm. We need to learn to love with compassion. Mm. Let's free ourselves from hatred. I mean, how free are we now? I mean, ain't I free now? Mm. I've got the knife for now. <laughs> so I'm free for right now. Right. So can you imagine me speaking this in another church? Mm. I don't think I'd get invited back for a second. <laughs> but ain't I free now? Oh, yeah. Ain't I free now? Mm -hmm. Ain't I free now? Yes. To be able to walk into a restaurant and not be judged because of the company I'm in. Mm -hmm. Ain't I free now? All right. To be able to come into this church mm -hmm. and not be judged by you. Mm -hmm. But I will be judged by the man. Oh. You see, they say that she walk around here, she's just trying to pretend. You see, I'm free enough to want to go with the shorthand. I like to be bald. It don't cost me nothing to use that. <laughs> I'm just studying your business, so I'm free now. <laughs> you see, I'll be judged because I have chosen to be a part of the metropolitan All right. community church. <laughs>
Dr. Joyce for that amazing message. My name is Jenny Nichols. I am a member of the Board of Directors and I am here to present the announcements for this week. First of all, we'd like to thank all of you who participated in the Pride events last weekend, starting with our Saturday afternoon worship service and potluck, which was fabulous, with plenty of spirit and rainbow-themed food that was shared by all who attended. And then on Sunday, we were able to hand out over a thousand Founders MCC bracelets. I believe they're the ones that says, God thinks you're fabulous. And information cards on the parade route, as well as participating in the interfaith worship service prior to the start of the parade. We'd like to give big thanks to our own Peter, Peter Kirkpatrick and all the rest for leading the music and for anyone else who attended that service. And then last night, Founders MCC hosted the Reverend Sheena Metal of LA Talk Radio for our first inaugural sp Saturday night spiritual worship event. Yes. It was wonderful. Yes, it was. The event brought together folks of different faith beliefs and backgrounds to be reminded of the power of love and of knowing each other just as we are and that we are enough. Our plan is for Sheena to be back again in July, so if you couldn't be here with us last night, please stay tuned and, fight and wait until July for her to return. On Tuesday, June 18th, this coming Tuesday, at 6.15 in the, in the upper conference room, is our monthly board of directors meeting. This is a great way to hear about all the behind the, so behind the scenes <coughs> things that are happening here and everybody in the congregation is welcome to come and participate. And the list goes on. Next Saturday, ICM will be hosting their 27th, 27th anniversary celebration event downstairs in the theater. Dinner is being followed by live entertainment with dancing, and the whole program begins <coughs> at 7 p.m. There's a $10 suggested donation but nobody will be turned away for lack of funds. And following that, on, in worship next Sunday, we'll be honoring, honoring our graduates at our 11 o'clock service. Please come here and help us congratulate them for all of their years of hard work. Congratulate their parents for all the years of their hard work, too. We'd also like to, well, we're also going to be welcoming contemporary gospel singer Sean Thomas, who will be with us in concert for both the 9 and the 11 o'clock services. And during those services, we'll be taking a love offering for him to help support with his ministry. Last Saturday in, in, in his sermon, Reverend Keith mentioned that ABC News had been here interviewing our own Reverend Troy Perry as part of their month-long celebration for Pride. The clip that was filmed has been posted all over Facebook, but in case you haven't seen it, we're going to share it in just a moment. And as that is being queued up, we'd also like to congratulate 16-year-old filmmaker Odessa Shalane Goldberg, the winner of the Troy Perry Award, for the top honors at this year's Our Pride Video Fest competition. 
Her short film, First They Came, interweaved images of mass shootings with Leonard Cohen's Hallelujah and Martin Niemöller's poem, First They Came. This video can be seen on Vimeo and online. Congratulations to Odessa, and thank you for your tribute. And now on with the video. I said I represent the homosexual community of Los Angeles. Reverend Troy Perry started the first LGBTQ plus ministry in his living room in 1968. I had taken out a man in a gay newspaper, The Advocate. Here, Reverend Troy Perry, a little four-page newspaper, and gave my home address in Huntington Park, California. And that first Sunday, 12 people showed up. But six Sundays later, they had outgrown Troy's living room and officially founded the Metropolitan Community Church. Today, the MCC is the largest LGBTQ plus ministry in the world with over 172 churches in 37 countries. But Troy didn't stop there. He spent the majority of his life fighting for the LGBTQ. I said, I represent the homosexual community of Los Angeles. Reverend Troy Perry started the first LGBTQ plus ministry in his living room in 1968. I had taken out a man in a gay newspaper, The Advocate. Here, Reverend Troy Perry, a little four-page newspaper, and gave my home address in Huntington Park, California. And that first Sunday, 12 people showed up. But six Sundays later, they had outgrown Troy's living room and officially founded the Metropolitan Community Church. Today, the MCC is the largest LGBTQ plus ministry in the world with over 172 churches in 37 countries. But Troy didn't stop there. He spent the majority of his life fighting for the LGBTQ plus community. You are credited with being one of the founding members of the first Pride Parade ever. Yes, New York always hates for me to say we had the first gay pride parade, but we did. <laughs> On the first anniversary of Stonewall, Troy had been encouraged to commemorate the riots by having a demonstration in L.A., but he had a different idea. I said, this is Hollywood. I said, we've already held the demonstrations. I said, uh, we're going to hold a parade. The thing that was amazing to me when I turned the corner, there were thousands of people. And I've never seen more dark shades and caps pulled over faces in my life, but I didn't care. They came. Troy has been recognized all over the world as a leader for the LGBTQ plus civil rights movement. This October, the robes he's worn and the documents he's cherished will be on display for the whole world to see at the Smithsonian Museum. But for now, you can find him on the corner of Prospect and Rodney, preaching to the Los Feliz neighborhood and continuing to fight for his community. We're going to win. The battle's not over yet. And, uh... When the battle's over, we shall wear a crown. And now as we come together for our tithes and offerings, I'd like to reflect back on Reverend Sheena's message from last night, how she reminded us that each of us is enough. And folks, we are enough. <clears throat> How we worship and celebrate God is enough. And as you present your financial offerings to God this morning, you will be blessed with enough. Enough to sustain you, enough to bring light and love and ministry to this church and the surrounding community. And enough to remind yourselves of the abundance that you are creating. On behalf of all of us who are served by your generosity, I'd like to say thank you.
Almighty God, we offer you our gifts of time, talent, and treasures with our open hearts, our open minds, so that in blessing them, you can speak to us today as you spoke to those who went before us. In blessing them, may others come forward to tell their stories of the wonders and of your greatness. In blessing them, we, be, we may be ready to hear them and be reminded of your grace and love. Amen. Amen. May God be with you. And also with you. We lift up our hearts. We lift, we lift them up to God. the Lord. Let us give thanks to our God. It, it is right to give our thanks and our praise. praise. As we continue with this pastoral prayer, the following is an adaptation of the Christian affirmation of Juneteenth from the African American lectionary. As we commemorate freedom as African Americans, let us not forget the trials and tribulations faced by our ancestors, forced into slavery for hundreds of years. Let us continue to emphasize the importance of education and the advancement of the African American race. God has granted us freedom. Let us use it wisely, guard it carefully, and embrace it totally. Allow this Juneteenth celebration to serve as a reminder of our tenacity, our ability to hold on to hope and to our God. Let all people of all religions come together and acknowledge a period in our history that shapes and continues to negatively influence American society. Allow other ethnic groups to be sensitized to the conditions our ancestors endured and help them to understand why racism and bigotry cannot have the last word. Let all African Americans continue to hope for a better tomorrow while remembering and rejoicing over our triumphant heritage. We will not forget the middle passage. We will continue to tell our ancestral story of bondage that gave way to freedom, both physically and spiritually. And we shall never strive or forget that advanced the realm of God through liberation and excellence. Thanks be unto God for granting freedom and giving us victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. We are more than conquerors through Jesus who yes. loves us. Amen. 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 And now let us take a brief moment of silence to give God that thanks and blessings. Receive to pray for those in need. For these and all the prayers that are on our hearts, both spoken and unspoken, we pray to God as we sing together a prayer in the spirit in the same way that Jesus taught us to pray.
Please be seated. As we prepare to celebrate our Holy Communion, may this open table represent more than conviction. May it represent change. Change the easy peace we make with ourselves into discontent because of the impression for others. Change our tenacity and tendency to even defend ourselves into the freedom that comes from being forgiven and empowered because of your love. Change our need for disguises, excuses, and images into the ability to be honest with ourselves and open with each other. Change our inclination to judge others into a desire to serve and to uplift others. And most of all, change our routine worship and work into genuine encounter with you and our better selves so that our lives will be changed for the good of all. As we prepare to celebrate with the bread and the fruit of the vine that has been given to us so freely, may God's Spirit empower us to move from the ways of death to the ways of new life. As we forgive one another and one forgive ourselves to another into a joyful community of justice and peace. And so we remember on that night, before he died, he took bread and he blessed it and he broke it and he said, take, eat, this is my body given for you. Whenever you do so, do so in remembrance of me. After the supper, he took the cup, the fruit of the vine, and said, drink of this, all of you, for this is my blood, my life essence, to be poured out for you for the forgiveness of all sins, now and forever. Whenever you drink of this cup, do so in remembrance of me. Will you pray with me? By the power of the Holy Spirit, and may this bread and the fruit of the vine be the essence of Christ for us. In receiving this spiritual nourishment, may we receive the very being of Christ in us. And may the power of the Spirit ignite our hearts and minds and wills for love and service. Through Christ, in Christ, and with Christ. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory is yours. God most holy, now and forever. Amen. To prepare for this feast of love, I now invite the servers and acolytes and ushers to come forward. At Founders MCC, as well as MCCs all over the world, this is an open table. For you don't have to be a member of this church or any church, for this is an open table. This is Christ's table. We have both regular and gluten-free wafers. Just let your servers know. If you prefer to receive communion with no human intervention, please know that we've set aside sacred elements to uh, our left, to my left, to your right, where you can be one with God. For all are welcome and invited to this table of love, mercy, and freedom. Wherever you are on your life journey, come as the ushers guide you, for the feast is ready. God invites you to join at this table. You are all welcome. <clears throat> at the table for everyone born a mountain race a safe place for growing for everyone born a mountain race we join
set the table, a place in the earth. and joy a place at the table for all who've been hurt a place to be healed for all the insane a place of acceptance for broken and bruised at the table. Have you enjoyed having Dr. Joyce here today? Yes. And I don't know if you remember this or not, but we are serving lunch after the 11 o'clock service, not now. It's too early, maybe. Um, 
but those of you that want to hang around for the 11 o'clock service, after the 11 o'clock service, we'll be having lunch downstairs, provided by our Azania group here at the church, so you know you're in for some good food. Oh, we yes. hope that you'll hang around and enjoy some time with us, and Dr. Joyce will we'll go back to the back and greet you as well uh, when we go out, so you'll get a chance to speak with her between services. Would you rise as you're able and join us in our closing song? <laughs> And just before we're dismissed, let me um, also let you know that you're not getting cheated if you can't stay for lunch. There is hospitality outside in the courtyard and the hunter room, so come by for some coffee, some juice, and some something to nibble on, I suspect. Is that right? Something to nibble on, yes. So go down there and get a little something. That'll hold you over to lunch. Amen? Once again, we're glad to have Dr. Joyce with us. Would you pray with me? God, thank you for this time that we have to celebrate Father's Day and Juneteenth and celebrate you being among us. Yes. Thank you for bringing Dr. Joyce to give us another message, a heartfelt message, a spirit-filled message. And thank you, God, because we so live beneath our spiritual means sometimes. We so live beyond our freedoms we don't even know sometimes that we have or that we have to take. And sometimes we realize that there are freedoms on the books, but not on people's hearts. 
And we ask you now, Lord, to help us to get those freedoms as Dr. Joyce spoke to us earlier. Help, help us to get those freedoms in our hearts and live them out daily. We ask these things in the name of Jesus our Christ and all that is holy. Amen. 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 Shake hands and be friendly. <laughs>